Well, Edmund, you've got a variety of vegetables here, and some of them I'm very familiar with, and some of them I'm not. So, you know, what do you have here to share with us? Yeah, so I'm really excited to be here to talk about seeds. And this is, um, what I have here is stuff that we're harvesting mm -hmm. um, this week. So, um, this will start with this watermelon. It's called Yellow Moon and Stars. Um, it's done really well for us this year. It's beautiful yellow on the inside, very sweet. Um, and I can see where it gets its name from here's the moon and there's the stars. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And then what do we have here? So that is a uh, sweet corn seed crop. Mm -hmm. um, so what you do with that is you grow the sweet corn, but then you let it sit there on the plant and get dry like that. And it's actually a little bit tough to do in Virginia because it can rain on, yeah. on the corn as it's drying. So field corn has no trouble drying, but sweet corn, um, you have to really harvest it just at the right time so that you can, um, so it doesn't get moldy. So it's something that if you found out that you wanted to leave it on the, um, on the uh, stalk, is it about another two weeks to leave it on in typical Virginia weather or three weeks or about how much, or is it just variable so much by the weather? I think it's about three weeks, okay. three or four weeks. Just to give a yeah. timeline, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then these beautiful red peppers, these are gorgeous. So that's a variety called sweet bullnose. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of what we do is, is just find varieties that really work well and then steward them and work with them and continue to save the seeds. So that's, that's a pepper variety that I really like. It holds well, it gets to the red stage without uh, going bad and then it keeps well and it's really sweet and a little bit, a little bit tangy as well. Wonderful, so what's the cultivar again? Sweet bullnose. Oh, beautiful, gorgeous too. But then you have things I'm familiar with, with cucumbers and some others I'm not. So yeah. talk about something a little more familiar to me, the cucumbers. Okay, um, so I've been doing research work with cucumbers for a number of years and I've got three varieties here that I'm really excited about. Um, a lot of the focus is downy mildew resistance because uh -huh. that's a really big problem in the late season yes. um, for cucurbits. So I wanted things that you can harvest in August, September, October, um, when most cucumber varieties won't, um, won't survive. Yeah, they've petered out because of the mildew, mm -hmm. yes. So what's the one on the far right there? So this one is called DMR401. Mm -hmm. It's the first one that I kind of started working with in collaboration with Cornell University. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, basically I trialed their stuff. I trialed a bunch of different um, variety, like seed stocks that they sent down and figured out that this was my favorite. And then Michael, who I'm working with at Cornell said, yeah, that's my favorite too. Let's do something with it. So our seed company, Commonwealth Seed Growers, started selling it and, and putting it out there. Um, For people to enjoy? Yeah, yeah and that was, that was starting in about 2016, I think. Um, and then the pickling ones. So these picklers, this is something that I bred um, myself. Um, I did a research trial in 2014 where I crossed, uh, where, I, where I looked at a lot of different cucumbers to see what did well, well with downy mildew. And then I ended up crossing my favorites and have been selecting them every year since then to come up with this. And I, I just really love pickling cucumbers. Um, they have thinner skin mm -hmm. than, um, slicers. than slicers and they're just delicious to eat fresh. Briefly tell me about these because we want to get to this. Yeah, so this is actually um, related. These are related. They come from the same cross, Interesting. the same three-way cross, but the breeding diverged about four years ago maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so this is called Southwind Slicer and it's a little bit different than um, than the DMR401, a little bit different color, mm -hmm. but it's a really resilient, downy mildew resistant plant that's also drought tolerant and um, mildew resistant. Mildew resistant and bacterial wilt resistant as well. Fantastic. Well, tell me about this because we were going to do a demonstration on seed saving. Yeah, so this is actually a cucumber. Um, some varieties got this russet when they get mature. Uh, a lot of them turn yellow, but you know, when you're saving seeds from cucumbers, you let them get really big well, way past the eating stage. So I'm gonna cut this open. Okay. Um, and we're gonna take the seeds out. Sounds great. Let's see. It's a nice sharp knife you've got there. 
Yeah, I kind of like to cut around the outside so you don't risk cutting the seeds so much. Oh, look at that. Beautiful seeds yeah. inside, yes. Um, so then you, you take and scoop it out. I'll just do one side here. Yes. Um, so you've got the seeds in the pulp. What do we do next with it? So next you let it sit here for about three days. Mm -hmm. It's called a fermentation. Um, and that allows, um, there's a kind of a coating, a gel coating on the seeds that has to come off and that happens during fermentation. Okay. And then after that, the basic principle is that the seeds sink and the pulp floats. So you add water and, and uh, kind of wash the pulp away from the seeds. And then you take the seeds and you dry them on a screen in front of a fan. For about how long, a few days or? Um, I'd say about a week. Okay. Um, it depends on your conditions. We have sort of a dehumidified room that we do it in. Um, and after a, about a week, you can put them in, a, in an open container to keep sort of curing a little bit. Interesting. Um, quickly, we've got one minute. Tomatoes mm -hmm. are a little different you were sharing. Yeah. So real quick, let's okay. do tomatoes. Tomato seed saving. Let it get really ripe, maybe riper than this one even. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just mash it up. And after this, it's similar to the cucumber. Where you've got to let it ferment? Yeah, let it ferment for about three days. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to note that it's good to stir them during that time, once or twice a day, to keep mold, mold from forming. Okay. Um, and then you pour it off just like the cucumber and put the seeds on the screen. Put the water and the seeds mm -hmm. will float and the pulp will float again. Okay. And then the most important thing is to label. Yeah. <laughs> label yeah. what you've got. A good Sharpie <laughs> and masking tape is very important. <laughs> put the date and the variety abbreviation. It's more important. You'll never remember. So. Yeah. Edmund, this has been fun. And I thank you for bringing in some of the, I'll say, newer cultivars of vegetables we've been growing in our garden, but that have been bred here in Louisa County and will be very successful in this unique growing environment of the high humidity of central Virginia. So thank you very much. So good to be here talking about seeds with y'all.